What's up and welcome to Groundbreaking, a friendly original podcast celebrating and sharing the stories of young creatives across the music industry who are embarking on and writing their own journeys. Each episode, we feature a new up-and-comer, discuss their work, and make sure we leave you with a takeaway too. I'm Jake Brewer. Let's get started. Today, I'm joined by Nashville-based artist manager, Claire Soika, and we're talking all about trust. In an ever-evolving industry like music, building relationships can be really difficult. So Claire and I broke down what we think is most effective for not only building trust, but maintaining it. We're also sharing what we've learned as managers and discuss how a title that's been around for some time has recently been changing. Hey everybody, welcome back to Groundbreaking. So excited that you are here today with us for this episode because not only did today's guest fight for their life to get on to this meeting today, um, our guest downloaded Google Chrome for us, which was one of the nicest things anybody's ever done for me. Um, So our guest is really, really committed today. And I think it's going to be an amazing conversation because I've been so interested across everything they've ever touched and, and done and has been somebody I haven't known of for that long, but it was always have been somebody that I'd kind of like hoped we would have a deeper kind of conversation at one point. And so I invited today's guest to be on the show because I selfishly wanted to talk to them. <laughs> and I just thought our conversation would be would be great um, for other people to hear because we're going to be talking a lot about trust and relationships in music today. And I think this is a conversation and an episode that really will just apply to everybody no matter what your role is even if you're in music or not i think you're going to be able to find some really key takeaways from today's conversation which is always my goal um so you probably are sick of hearing from me already so i want to introduce the superstar and amazing manager and tour manager the does it all with perfection and nothing less Um, my new friend, Claire Soika, welcome to Groundbreaking. Thanks for having me. Hey. Oh my gosh. Of course. I'm so glad you said yes, because (laughs) I was scared you, because if you said no, it would have crushed me. I was so So. flattered when you asked me. I was like, okay, good. Oh my God. I get to be on a podcast. (laughs) Yes. Yes, you do. Well, it's this podcast, which hopefully, hopefully is a good, a good first impression to the, to the world. Because I have a feeling you're going to be asked to be on so, so many more. (laughs) Um, But I first came across all of your work through the amazing guys of Cam Cool. And I have just been so obsessed with them since I've ever heard their first song. And then I got to play with them and just an amazing group of people. And then I think what really stuck with me about the first time that I was able to meet all of you was how cohesive you all were. It was you embodied something that I just I think everybody should really just adopt at least at least try out of like everybody is a part of the band like it doesn't matter what you're doing in any facet like you are all operating as this creative force and that is something that only seems natural because when it's right it is natural but is really really hard to come across and takes a ton of work and so I'm really looking forward to our conversation today because I want to ask you a lot about how we're building trust in these relationships and especially for for young artists who have so much to gain and at the same time I hate to say like so much to lose but it, it kind of feels like that ambivalence sometimes so I want to um I want to ask you kind of where your first sort of like hey is is something in music for me what was that <laughs> moment like for Claire uh, it was kind of when I moved to Nashville so I moved to Nashville to go to Lipscomb University um, and to be honest when I first came to college I did not know what I wanted to do at all. I knew I liked live music, but that's never been really like in my mind as a career path. Um, And so I was undeclared for my first year. And in my first year, I like made a habit or maybe not a habit, but um, one of my hobbies was I would like go to a show like at least like twice a week or something like that. And I I just became friends with like so many music people. Um, I got a job at a coffee shop here and 
everyone that I made friends with there, like as coworkers, were all musicians. And that's just kind of how I realized that like, I want to do this like forever. And so like, why not get paid while I do it? Yeah. 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 That sounds like a well thought out process. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't I feel mean, like it Nashville, in the moment, but <laughs> but it hey, it turned out pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dare I say? Um, <laughs> Nashville, of course, is just is the perfect city to kind of commit and and to meet some just really really warm, lovely, lovely people. Do you feel like? Oh, yeah. Do you feel like your perception of maybe like thinking a think your world of like as a concert attendee? Did that feel different when you started, like, then maybe thinking about, like, working in it? Because I know sometimes that's a big fear for people of, like, could translating my hobby into work make me fall out of love with it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I noticed that, like, when I made that decision to go down that career path, um, that I would then go to shows and instead of, like, just focusing on the show and the music and, like, the entertainment of it, I would like look around and like try to point out all the background people, I guess, like try to figure out like, oh, like I know that they're, those people are here, like trying to scout this band and like, that's so cool to watch. And like seeing all like, like the sound guys and the, everyone like backstage, like trying to help. And like, it's so much more than just like entertainment and like just looking for those was entertaining for me. Because it made me more yeah. excited to like go into it. Yeah, and what what other realms exist that I just don't yeah. know of? <laughs> yeah, and I feel like th- I just feel like I learn of new new roles in everything almost on like the daily, just mm-hmm. because of how quickly music changes. Do you? I guess did you think manager was was the was the route for you or because I feel like I hear a lot of managers go like I don't know I kind of just fell into it (laughs) but also I hear some that are like no this is what I've always wanted to do I like I had this Mm -hmm. had this kind of plan what did that sort of path look like for for you and were you like do I need to scout people like (laughs) where do you kind of find your first footing yeah I I definitely thought of manager first um I like grew up playing music and stuff but I never I never thought that I would like be an artist um and I thought that like being a manager somehow could be like the closest to that um you get to build a relationship with like with the artists and everything and you're like basically in charge of everything um I also definitely thought about like tour managing because I love traveling um same with like booking like I would I might be a booker someday um because I like to travel and I like to just find new venues you know um and and music is like a kind of industry that you don't have to stay in the same job for so long like you could switch it up if you want to there's always going to be a position so yeah. Oh, absolutely. And even either one that's open or one that you have to create because there's yeah. a need for it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, there's always so something me- needed. So. Mm. Oh, yeah. And most of the time it's playing catch up to the needs rather mm-hmm. than the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How did you meet Camp Cold? Or like, was that even like the next, the next sort of thing that happened? Or what? Yeah, I guess I know. I guess I know point A now, and I knew of point B. Mm -hmm. What was what was what's the path between those two? Yeah, so um, Cam Cool is actually my my first band that I'm managing, Um, and I I met them um, at the coffee shop that I work at. We were all working together. Well, it was I met Aaron Aaron Cage, who's one of our front men, and Ian Shaw, who plays bass. Um, and at the time they were the only other two working at this coffee shop. Um, and they, both of them became like my first friends at that job, which was so awesome. And they would talk to me about Cam Cool and how they were like, they didn't have a manager at the time. Um, but they, you could tell that they were like, they're building their way up to meeting one. Um, and eventually like after building our relationship a little bit as friends 
um, and seeing them flourish as a band, um, I asked them if if they need someone, um, I'll manage them if they want. And they said yes. And it's been about a year now. Um, and it's just been so, so awesome. Wow. Yeah. How much has your relationship changed over the course of this past year? Um, we weren't super close in the beginning. Um, I kind of went out, went really out on a limb asking them to be their manager. Um, but after last summer, we went on our first tour and that was like, it, when you're traveling with someone, your relationship definitely grows a little bit Yeah. because you're yeah. stuck in a, in a 15 person van for 10 days. <laughs> Yeah. You got no one else to talk to, really. <laughs> There's no option. Yeah, you have yeah, to be yeah. close. Yeah. Yeah. And throughout the course of the year, um, Tyler Cage, who's the other frontman, he also worked at that coffee shop with us. And um, we just kind of hang out every night. And I don't know. It just like, like any relationship, we just got super, super close. And now we're like way, way closer than we ever were when I first started managing them so yeah yeah did you feel like when you first started working with them how did your sort of perception of of work and music kind of change because there's there's then that little pressure gets added of like now I play a role in somebody else's dream Mm -hmm. but I also now I'm a part of that dream yeah like and you kind of create this really, really unique, I, I want to call it codependency. I don't know if that's the right term. No, yeah. not, in a way, you kind of are, but in a way, you kind of aren't. Yeah, I know what, what you is mean. That, <laughs> yes. How, how do you kind of balance that like mindset of there's my, my goals and my ambitions are kind of tangent to somebody else's and this is I don't know the geometry that well so maybe this, maybe it's parallel maybe it's I don't know if those are <laughs> opposites but how how did how does that like how does that feel and was that a feeling that maybe you were kind of expecting or maybe if you were like I don't know it was just the most natural thing yeah I think especially with Cam Cool um we kind of like have made it a point for our vision as a band um to include everyone to say like we are cam cool you me everyone you know uh, yeah. we want to be as inclusive as possible and i think that really helped with me like learning how to manage and stuff um because it is it is their dream um that i'm helping build helping make happen really um but they I mean, Aaron takes my input and I take Tyler's input and, and we're kind of, it kind of just all meshes together. So like one person has an idea and another person has an idea and we come together to birth this new thing. Um, and it always seems to work out. So, yeah. It's, it's so, it's so wild and it's, (laughs) it's such a, it's a piece of, of, and I just, when I say music, I guess I mean the music industry. There's mm-hmm. something about the turn the music industry that makes me like so uncomfortable. Um, Cause I also just don't, it also has this kind of connotation that yeah. is so like nasty that I don't feel like either end of this conversation is adopting. <laughs> um, so when you're, when you're kind of building that and so much of, and then I know you're like, this is, it is such like a shared sort of like goal and something that we're all like a part of. Do you feel like, and this is, I don't know, maybe this is a very, this might be a very personal and very like (laughs) odd question, but do you feel like, do you have to like fight for your own sort of personal fulfillment? Because I will, maybe, and maybe I really ask that because it's not super obvious and the credit isn't always given to, Mm. to anyone behind the scenes, truthfully, whether it be a tour manager and manager of a publicist, a lawyer, a everyone. Um, do you do you have to find like ways to feel validated in that? Or how do you 
I don't know. And maybe this is me projecting a little bit. <laughs> and maybe it's maybe it's my own thing I need to work through. <laughs> but I, I guess I'm really just curious. Do you feel like there's a part of you that searches for fulfillment beyond maybe what like a normal job just like directly would give you? And I say normal job, like a corporate <laughs> job, not that your job isn't normal. Like but I feel like you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. That's a great question. I think, I think when I started, before I like knew how to manage a band or anything um I thought that would be a problem but the more that I like work in the industry I I realize I mean for me personally I'm okay with like not getting credit given all the time like obviously I feel like so honored and touched when they like mention me on stage but like other than that like it doesn't I don't need that. Um, what like makes me feel fulfilled is when like they ask me to like, to like, I don't know, like, do you know, do you have a contact for this venue or do you, do you want to email this person and like ask about whatever, you know, like that, I'm like, yeah. that makes me feel like, oh, like that's something that I can give and they can't. Not yeah. like, oh, that sounds that sounds kind of nasty. I mean, like, <laughs> no, 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 I know, you know I know like, exactly what you mean. Yes, and it makes me feel wanted, and like that is enough for me, you know. Yeah, it's it's the way that you can deliver. Yeah, what like you can do best. Yeah, exactly. And so, and somebody, and there's something so important to say about um them even kind of being like, can you like do this because Mm -hmm. you know a a career and like especially when you're like are really attached to your music and who hears that and where that's played and where you are playing and if anybody's listening and all of those kind of concerns that revolve around being like a specifically to like an artist Mm -hmm. like can get projected a little bit upon the manager who has just a different relationship not not better worse just different yeah and it's such a compliment when they can then be like because that's that's trust that you understand the vision mm-hmm. and they they know they don't have to necessarily like micro manage which again sounds like like yeah like Claire's the manager like of course <laughs> but it but it takes such a deep level of trust and yeah. so what do you think about what is it about your relationship that over the past year you've got you've gone to that to that point like what what foundation did you set or what experience did you have that you think you were able to like demonstrate like you can trust me I think definitely tour going on tour for the first time that was like I was really nervous going into that because I was like I don't know if I could if I could like be in charge of all these people that like yeah are creatives so they obviously have like a mind of their own and like like I just didn't know if I could actually do it um and at the end like I feel like I I did pretty well and and the guys were saying that like I did such a great job and that like they want to keep having me all the time and that was like like I don't want to say like oh finally I gained their trust but it was like a like a sigh of relief being like sure. like they I felt honored that they would like hand over their child of a band yeah. <laughs> you know that like this project that they've been that, that they've put years into over to me not fully but like but majority of like like we want you like here take this and make it something, you know, yeah. that felt really good. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Where did you go to learn? Like, the, like, was it the Google shirt search of like, what does a manager do? Or like, <laughs> what, like, where did you, and especially going at like embarking on like a tour for the first time, mm-hmm. you're, like, you're right. Like the stakes are so high. Yeah. And it's like, and you aren't even really like, performing you're doing more than just performing for like an audience on a tour like you Mm -hmm. are you're proving that you can everybody can like can meet the demand of this can you know understand what's going on and can get all things to and from like Mm -hmm. a tour is not a vacation it's it feels like 
the most stressful like <laughs> like I was like yeah like um the most stressful like hour of work you know like that's like mm-hmm. tour but it's like two weeks long yeah. or however long it, it actually is no really but it but it, you're exactly it's my favorite thing in the world too mm-hmm. um and I guess so how did you kind of empower yourself to be like I can I, I can do this I can take I can take this on and I guess where did you go to be like what am I expected to do because was this was your first tour correct mm-hmm. yeah okay yeah so yeah well, yeah what'd you do <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I think I I would say school really helped me a lot I changed my major to music business and a lot of my classes were um helped me with that um I don't love school so like the fact that I got most of my 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 knowledge about it from classes is kind of like eh. um <laughs> but I also like <laughs> when I first started I kind of just uh Aaron Aaron and I like kind of co-managed for a while um so that he could like show me the ropes in a sort of way and then eventually I just like I started getting friends that are manager people and tour managing people and I would just like kind of go to them with questions or like you said, like I honestly, I would just Google search um, or like look yeah. up a YouTube video because like it, the, in, my entire job for the rest of my life will be a learning process. And that's just something that like you got, you kind of have to come to terms with. I don't think anyone will ever know everything um, cause it's always changing and it's always something new. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't even say that I'm like, like, I know it all now, you know, there's still like so many things that I don't know. And a lot of the things oh, yeah. like even after tour, a lot of the, a lot of things like came clear to me in hindsight that like, oh, we should have like been keeping merch sheets and like, we should have like like we should have like figured out our funds better or like organized our funds better and like all this stuff that like you don't I didn't think of on my first tour how could I you know yeah because you don't yeah every tour looks so different there's only so much you can do to prepare Mm -hmm. and you and you're you're emphasizing a point that is so I think crucial of just everything in music of like you just you learn through experience Mm mm-hmm and um like i would i would argue you are so so much more well equipped for like a tour now that you've had that experience oh yeah like you can you can take you can take classes and do as much like research as you possibly can to prepare for something like you did and that was the right and responsible thing to do but like you're right like there's there's certain lessons that you learn only through experience Mm -hmm. and you just have to be like you said like kind of brave enough to be like I'm not gonna know yeah everything like and I've you know I still I do things again and again and again and I go like how did I not learn that the first (laughs) time like I'm still like learning like things of like oh there's a better system Mm -hmm. for that or like you know it's probably a good idea to budget for things before you do the tour Mm -hmm. not (laughs) after yeah and 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 just kind of remembering that you know every tour and every artist is is different yeah and you know you can you can take certain things that will translate but there will be certain things that don't don't work the next time because you know maybe maybe it's an acoustic tour this time or maybe it's a band or it's a new market or it's a new city and every audience is different and there's just so Mm -hmm. many unpredictable things so long story short I love the mindset of like I'm forever going to be learning and I always have to kind of remind myself too of like you're never going to like be a hundred percent. Like I did everything right. Yeah. No matter like every single day, that's not going to, that's not going to happen. But what you can do a hundred percent right is recognize that there is a learning opportunity and everything and improve from that. Like even an yeah. email, like, Oh my God, writing <laughs> like a cold email is one of the, is like that sends shivers down my spine, <laughs> like, like nothing nothing else and so that's the other like really kind of like specific thing I want to like talk about is the Mm -hmm. like kind of outreach side of management and growing the career because I always like to say like a manager doesn't necessarily 
produce a career, mm-hmm. but like it's they it's in the name, like manage it. Yeah. But like there is the really amazing opportunity sometimes to, you know, bring in a new opportunity or, you know, elevate something that really makes you show your worth. Do you how did you kind of gain confidence in kind of both I guess when we're both in our like young careers now of like oh like I like I can maybe break an industry like norm and it's taken a long time for me to get to this question but I feel like I hear a lot of times especially from young people in music going like well that's not like the normal way to do it Mm -hmm. and I always like to be like think about all the people we're inspired by has their message ever been well I just did it the normal way like Oh, never. No, <laughs> no. And so how did, how did you kind of empower yourself to be like, I'm going to like, I'm going to go do this and I'm going to ask for this and like maybe try to not do the normal thing. Mm-hmm. Cause that can be really scary, especially so young in a yeah. career. Yeah. I mean, I think like the smallest thing that I've done that like helps like boost my I don't, not confidence really but like break that that social industry norm um is like even in my emails I am not I'm not so like business formal with it mm-hmm. um that's never been who I am and that's definitely not who Cam Cool is so if I'm writing an email on behalf of them like I I want to I want to put in like our mantra I guess in a word in it so like I sign all my things like with love Cameron I sign my I'm my I sign my emails Cameron sometimes um as the alias or whatever but um Yeah. (laughs) yeah and I in my just like in my wording I'm like very casual very like friendly um and it took me a while to get that way I definitely like when I first started, I was like so nervous and I was like, Oh, I have to like, I can't have any conjunctions and I can't like, (laughs) like, you know, I don't know. It's just like, that's a little thing that, um, that has helped me to, to find my footing really. Um, yeah. Yeah. I guess another way is like, I don't know when we're like playlisting or something, trying to playlist, I like, I DM you just DM people DM people that make big playlists and you're like hey please listen to our music I think you'll like it it sounds like some of your other stuff and like all this stuff just be super casual and like very friendly um because at the end of the day you want to make a new friend you know if you make a new friend that was a good interaction yeah oh absolutely do you feel like I think what surprised me a lot about music is it's not only it's not as competitive as competitive as I thought it was because there really is space for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, But you don't have to even try to be competitive. Yeah. Either because there's just no need. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like that only kind of puts you in a, a space where you don't view people as 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 something to embrace but something to I get yeah compete against Mm -hmm. do you feel like that's and I guess I'm really kind of asking too because you know I I live in New York you spent some time in like Nashville and two like major music cities like is that something that you feel like exists in Nashville music I think there is a sort of competitiveness here um I mean, if you live here, almost everyone that you meet is going to do something in music. Um, And that's like a lot of people like try to make it here. Um, But I think I'm a firm believer in like whatever you deserve will come to you. Um, And that that doesn't mean like don't work for it, you know. Um, But if you work for it and you deserve it, then you'll get those streams you'll get like the your dream venue you know um no matter how big you are really oh absolutely yeah yeah it's um it's almost like a it's kind of a a lonely thought to have of like just stay focused on what you 
put just focus and mm-hmm. put your energy into your career and but like but emphasizing like your career meaning like you and everyone around you and the team that you build and the people that you you trust um overall when i want to ask ask too like what what's your dream like venue what's like or what's my like my dream venue <laughs> that you could like walk in as tour manager like what's the venue that you're like heck yeah i like i made it oh, that's a good question i don't know if i've ever thought about that maybe like maybe the forum in la yeah that's kind of like like obviously there are other venues that are bigger than that but something like that that's like I've gone to so many times growing up seeing my favorite artists there and like yeah. if I am managing someone or I manage a tour that stops there that'll be like full circle moment for me yeah 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 i I feel that way too of like the places that I grew up seeing shows at and where like mm-hmm. kind of feel like your your passion for like oh this could be this could be something I'm interested in like was solidified mm-hmm. like yeah what a full circle like kind yeah. of experience it's that's crazy like I always say like um uh like House of Blues in Boston is like one for me because oh, like yeah. I went to shows there all throughout college mm-hmm. and like that is like that would be like a stage that'd be like oh, what. <laughs> yeah it'd be unbelievable um, unbelievable um today in in working um what's something that you feel like you've caught a stride on now that maybe you feel like would have like helped you a year ago and we can maybe kind of start to think about the people listening to this who go like oh like this is like claire might know something that i like could use for like What's something that like you feel like, I guess the simplest way I can ask this question is what's something you know now that you wish you knew then? Hmm. I think when I first started and I was just starting to like email venues and things like that, um, I would get so nervous uh, thinking that like the person that I'm emailing is like, like, I don't want to say like I put them on a pedestal but I just kept thinking that like oh they're gonna know that like I don't know what I'm doing and so they're gonna say no to me because they think I'm just a kid that doesn't know what she's doing um and now I would say to that no one cares yeah literally (laughs) no one cares no one knows that I'm only 21. No one knows that I'm still in school. Um, and if you just write an email like you're talking to them and not like you're this meek little like 18-year-old girl, then yeah. they'll take you seriously, you know? Oh, yeah. you like, yeah. I don't know. I definitely put too much thought into it, too much like anxiety into it, but there's really no need. <laughs> no. And you proved your point because I actually didn't even know you were still in school. <laughs> not, not me telling you like, oh, yeah, this, you're not going to learn anything classy. <laughs> like, I'm not even done yet. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I, I almost dropped out. But um, at this point, I'm oh. a senior now. So I might as well stay in. And I still I think I still get like kind of insecure about how young I am in the industry. Mm-hmm. Um there's definitely been some people that I've dealt with that like don't treat me like a normal industry person because I look young and I mean honestly because I'm a woman um but you just gotta like I don't know those kind of people don't matter and if they're still thinking that like it's a man's job or something then they're not gonna go very far so no <laughs> no because because that's not true you, like, yeah. you are pre-putting yourself into a dark corner oh if yeah that's if that's your belief and like yeah. what why are you putting yourself in that corner it's a lot more fun over here you know <laughs> <laughs> it's so much more fun and colorful over here <laughs> yes that's such that's such a healthy healthy mindset and one i'm 
one I think like I still like kind of have to learn and like remind my like self of of um not that everyone belongs in music I've mm-hmm. known that forever but like that like it like that's like there are still these pockets and like sometimes unfortunately there are people that you meet where like your your only takeaway just has to be like a that's that's just a course correction it mm-hmm. just has nothing nothing to do with me and has nothing to do with the people that I work with it has nothing to do with like the way that I am or the way that I speak or the way that I like to do things or what our dream is it doesn't have to do anything with that yeah it's really just going oh not that way we're mm-hmm. not going that way because that's not and especially as a manager like that's not a that's not a, a path you want to lead anybody down yeah and especially when you have like such a relationship of of trust and you're like you the relationship is I will say so beautifully fragile because mm-hmm. it's not not volatile but it's just it's something that is so so valuable and when it works it works so so well um how do you kind of continue to um how do I want to phrase this how do you continue to show that you understand the the path and demonstrate that you you are in the right mindset and um you know how how to operate and how things should be but also you want to be ambitious and you want to try new things and you want to do all like that is a really hard path i think to navigate mm-hmm. of like trying to like stick to what the goal is but also just still trying to like reach beyond it if that makes sense mm-hmm. is that something that you feel like you have to consciously balance or are you just that amazing that you are like nope that just comes naturally (laughs) (laughs) I don't know I think there's definitely like some things that I'm consciously thinking about like things that I learn in school about whatever um like budgeting or something or Mm -hmm. or talking to industry people or something like that but I think for the most part, it does come naturally. You just, it, I mean, all these interactions that you have with everyone that you meet, you're just like dealing with it on your toes. You know, you don't have your notes in front of you. Um, Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I guess it does, it does come kind of naturally. But I think like for most people, it does. Yeah. I don't know. That's great. That's good. <laughs> as as we start to wrap the conversation, I always like to ask like one question. And I always say it's going to be the last question. It never is because I always have a follow-up question. <laughs> but I really, really hope people like listen to everything that you say and really take something away from it because I think you have such a, such a healthy mindset and one that is enabling you for such success. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I actually already have a follow-up question. Um, <laughs> so... I haven't even given Wait, my answer I, yet. <laughs> I know you haven't. <laughs> and I already have a follow-up question. Okay, I'm going to ask the follow-up question first, and then we're going to get back to that other one. <laughs> okay. um, you're like, poor Claire, like, this is the most chaotic um, <laughs> way you're trying to structure this. Um, what, how, how do you define success? For Actually, mm. oh my, I already have another follow-up question, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, <laughs> how, how do you define success as a manager? Mm-hmm. And then you personally how do you define your own success Mm. and draw a venn diagram to show how those things compare um (laughs) no i'm kidding i'm kidding um but yeah you can answer those those first two questions first and i will stop talking before i ask more (laughs) i think hmm that was a good question as a manager i think how i define success is um That like whoever you're you're managing. Okay, so wait, okay. Let me start with this. As a manager, I I view like the role of a manager as um you the the artist comes to you with their vision and instead of making your own vision for them, you set that vision at the end, like as like the the, the finish line. And you help pave the path to that finish line, no matter how that goes. And you're just kind of, you're just kind of guiding this little artist all the way to their dream. And 
when they get to their dream, that's when I view success as a manager. Um, you know, it's not about like how many streams they get or how many followers they have or how many fans they have. I think it's like, like when they get to where they wanted to get to and you help made that happen. I would yeah. say that that's, that would be a successful manager. Um, I love I love a metaphor. <laughs> I love a metaphor. That's just like how I view it in my mind. Um, yeah, that's perfect. And I think for myself, I don't know. That's even that's an even tougher question because I I don't know I don't know if I've ever even thought about that. I think I'm a very like relational person. Um, relationships are very important to me and loyalty is very important to me um and i think how i view success for myself is if i have had like good relationships with everyone that i manage um i feel like with cam cool i just got lucky cuz they're all my best friends and i they're like the people that I love the most in the world <laughs> so like that already in my head I'm successful because everyone that I've managed I have good relationships with but yeah I think like I hear of all these managers that like like had a huge falling out with their artist or like have been managing the same person for 15 years and now like they don't speak to each other anymore and like, I never want to get to that point. I always want to end on yeah. good terms. And I want to, like, do as much as I can. And I want them to see that I've done as much as I can. Um, and just kind of acknowledge that. I don't know. Yeah. I think that's a great goal. <laughs> and something that I think really speaks to you as a professional, but also, like, is is seen through everything that you've said with mm -hmm. us today like of course like that is your goal because that's <laughs> that's sticking true to all the beliefs that you've shared with us thus far um the last question which it might be um we'll find out though <laughs> um is people have spent some time you know hearing about your takeaways and kind of what you've learned and how you build trust and then hopefully kind of finding their own sort of takeaways that they can apply to their own career no matter what they're doing I think everything that you've said today really can apply in so many different facets what is something that if somebody has an hour right now what can they what then can they go do and this is where I really want to leave people with a takeaway where of like if they just felt inspired by this episode inspired by you like you can give them a, a to-do right now that they can go like you know what, like Claire got me one step further, like no matter like how big that step was or and they can apply it in whatever direction they want to walk, but one step further, dare I say to that finish line <laughs> metaphor that you're using, what, what's something that they can do right, right now? I, hmm. honestly, I would just say do something creative do anything that like gets your brain flowing no matter what you want to do as a career um l like music has helped me a lot um writing has helped me a lot even just like drawing has helped me a lot like it anything anything that like dare i say gets your creative juices flowing um yep, yep. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, get you out of any funk and, like, help you to, um, I don't know, just kind of feel better about yourself. Um, yeah. And another thing, tell the people that you love that you love them. I mean, yeah. that's just, like, I don't know. You, you might not get the chance to ever if you don't right now. Yeah. And that's something that no matter what you do will get you far is yeah. just letting the people that you know or letting the people that you love and that you like to be around that you like to be around them 
makes other yeah. people feel good, makes you feel good. Yeah. It makes everyone feel good. Makes everyone feel good. I love ending on that note <laughs> so much so that I'm going to keep this brief. Claire, thank you so much for being a part of the show and for being so transparent and honest and wow. so creative and contributing to a direction that I really hope more people in music go of just embracing people and building those just really valuable relationships and seeing people as people. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much for for all of that. I'm I'm so appreciative in so many ways of everything that you're doing. And I'm really, really appreciative of your time today and being yeah, a part of this. Of course. Thank you for, for asking me to to talk about this. I feel very honored. Good. I'm so <laughs> glad you did because I feel like I took a step further today. Yeah. So just by hearing from you. So thank you. Yeah, of course. Thanks for joining me today on Groundbreaking. To keep up with Claire, her clients, and all of their amazing work, you can check out the social links in the description. Be sure to stay tuned for more next time on the show. And as always, be sure to rate and comment on the show from wherever you're listening. You can also connect with me at Jake Burrow Music across all social channels and see more of what Friendly's up to at Friendly Media or by visiting FriendlyMedia.com. That's F-R-N-D-L-Y Media. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time for more Groundbreaking. Groundbreaking.